Hey guys, and welcome back to this class, Unsupervised Machine Learning, Hidden Markov Models in Python. In this lecture, we are going to go over the very important scan function in Theano. Why is this important? Think about how Theano works. You have to create variables and link them together functionally, but they don't have values until you actually run the functions. So when you create your X matrix, you don't give it a shape. You just say that it's a matrix. So Theano knows it's a two dimensional object. What happens if you want to loop through all N elements of X? Well, Theano doesn't know what N is because you haven't yet told it what value you're going to pass in for X. If you know that X is always going to be length N, then you can do a for loop from zero to N. Generally speaking, we cannot usually guarantee the length of our training sequences. So what happens if you want to do something like for i in x range x dot shape zero? You can't do this because x dot shape zero doesn't have a value yet. This is where the Theano scan function comes into play. The scan function allows you to pass in the length of a Theano variable as the number of times it will loop. Now sometimes you can use a for loop but you still may want to use the scan function instead. Here are some of the advantages of scan over for loops. First, it allows the number of iterations of the loop to be part of Theano's symbolic graph. Second is that it minimizes the number of GPU transfers if the GPU is involved. Third is that it can compute gradients through sequential steps. The fourth is that it's slightly faster than a Python for loop with a compiled Theano function. The fifth is that it can lower the overall memory usage by detecting the amount of memory needed. So let's look at the anatomy of a scan function. This is the scan function in its simplest form. The first argument is some function that it's going to apply to every element of the sequence that you pass in. The second argument is the actual sequence to pass in. So every individual element in the sequence will have the fn function applied on it. n steps is the number of times to iterate. Usually that's just the length of the sequence. The function returns two things, something called outputs and something called updates. Updates is a Theano object of type ordered updates. Usually we just ignore it, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Outputs is what we're really interested in. Assuming some function returns something, outputs will be all the n things it returned concatenated together. So for example, if I pass in 1, 2, 3, and my function is square, the outputs will be 1, 4, 9. Of course, the scan function can do more complex things than this. So let's incorporate another argument, outputs info, which allows us to compute recurrence relations. The outputs info argument represents the initial values of your recurring variables. Notice I put it in a list. That's because there can be more than one, and Theano expects a list here. So you can imagine we could compute something like Fibonacci, which depends on the previous two values. Note that when we do this, when your recurrence returns more than one thing, the outputs variable of the scan gives you both of these things in a list. So you'll get the recurring variables there too. In fact, however many things you return from the recurrence, that's what you'll get in the outputs. Yet another argument we can add is the non-sequences argument. This is for passing arguments into the recurrence that we don't want to loop through. We just want the whole thing. Let's now write these in code and see what happens. All right, so we're first gonna write scan1.py. This is in the GitHub repo, if you don't wanna code along. So we're going to import numpy as mp, import theano, import theano.tensor as t. And we're going to set x to be a vector, which means every element in the loop will be a scalar. We'll define a function called square. This is going to return x times x. Now we're going to call Theano scan. Outputs updates equals Theano.scan. 
So the fn is square. Sequences is x. And steps is x dot shape zero. Okay, so we still need to create a Theano function. So that's going to be called square op. Going to make a Theano function. Inputs will be just x, and the outputs will be outputs. So our output value is going to be square op. And we're going to pass in an array of one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll print output oval. Oops, oval. So let's run this. All right, so the results are as expected. All right, next we're going to work on scan2.py. So we're going to have all the same imports as before. And this time we're going to try to calculate Fibonacci. And we're going to pass in n instead. OK, so we'll define a scalar called n. We'll define our recurrence. It's going to take in n fn1, fn2. We're not actually going to use n. We're just going to return fn1 plus fn2. And also fn1. So the outputs and updates will be the same. We call Theano scan. So the fn is recurrence, of course. Now the sequences are not an actual sequence that we have, but we're going to make one. So we're going to use the a range function. This is just like the Python range function, but for Theano. Pass in n steps equal to n. And outputs info is the initial values. So I'm going to pass in 1 and 1. Right, because the first two initial values of Fibonacci are 1 and 1. Now I'm going to create the actual function, which is a Theano function, and it's going to take as inputs just n, and the outputs will be outputs. So my output value will be Fibonacci, and I'm going to do eight steps of Fibonacci, and I'm going to print out the output at the end. So let's run this. So you can see the results are as expected. Notice how we have two things in the output. Right? We have 2 to 55 and then 1 to 34, which seems to be one behind the first array. And that's because in our recurrence, we're returning the newest value and the previous value. Now let's do the next example. All right, so now we're going to be working on scan3.py. It's going to require these imports. So what we're going to do in this example is a low pass filter. So we're going to create a signal which is going to have a lot of noise and it's going to be length 300 and the underlying trend will be a sine wave all right and we'll plot it so you know what it looks like with the noise Now I'm going to define a variable called decay. 
and a vector called sequence. So that's going to be our noisy signal. Now our recurrence function is going to take an x, the last value of our cleaned up sequence, and decay. We're going to return 1 minus decay times x plus decay times the last value. Now the outputs here, I'm just going to ignore the updates this time. We're going to call scan. So fn will be recurrence. Sequences will be sequence. And the steps will be sequence dot shape zero. Outputs info will be a float, just the value zero. And non sequences will be, of course, decay. Okay, we're going to create a Theano function called LPF. And it's going to take in the inputs, sequence, and decay. And the outputs will just be the outputs of the scan. So let's set y to be the output of LPF. We're going to pass in x and 0.99 will be the decay. We'll plot y, give it a title, and show it. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so here's the original signal. Pretty noisy. And here is the cleaned up signal.